Hey there, Royal Watchers. Buckle up, we're about to dive into another Royal drama that's hotter than a British summer heat wave. And right now, this is me, your favourite no holds bad critic. Today, we're talking about the latest episode of the never ending saga of Meghan vs. the world. Now, I know you're excited to hear more about this, guys, but before we dive into any further details, Make sure to smash the like button, hit the subscribe, ring the ring the bell as well, and we'll get right in to today's video. So Meghan Markle, former actress turned duchess turned professional victim, decides to do a bombshell in a Netflix show. She claims that her engagement interview with the BBC was nothing more than an orchestrated reality show. If you want to see an orchestrated reality show, just look in the mirror. But here's where it gets juicy. Michelle Hussein, the star BBC interviewer who conducted that engagement interview, has finally had enough of Meghan's nonsense. She's hitting back. And let me tell you, it's satisfying, guys. Hussein, bless her heart, is basically saying, excuse me, what now? She's pointing out that during the interview, Meghan and Harry seem to have their lives all figured out. They were talking about their future like they were planning a picnic, not plotting their escape from the royal family. And here's the kicker, Hussein says there was nothing that pointed to what would happen. In other words, Meghan was all smiles and sunshine during the interview. Not a storm cloud in sight, but now she wants us all to believe it was all fake. Come on, guys, Meghan, even your acting skills aren't that good. Now, let's talk about this orchestrated reality show claim for a second. You were an actress on a cable TV show. Anyone knows about orchestrated reality, it's you. But an engagement interview, that's not a reality show. That's just reality. And let's not forget, this is the BBC we're talking about here, guys. They're not exactly known for their wild and crazy reality TV programming. If they were going to orchestrate a reality show, I'm pretty sure it would involve more tea drinking and polite disagreement. But wait, there's more Megan claims they weren't allowed to tell their story. Oh, please, you have the entire world's attention. You could have tapped into your story if you wanted to. But no, you chose to smile and nod. And now you want to cry foul. That's rich, even for a duchess. Now, the BBC, bless them, didn't mince words. They call Meghan's claim simply untrue. In British speak, that's the equivalent of calling someone a big fat liar. And Hussein, she threw some loyal level shade by saying, we know recollections may vary on this subject, but here is what really grinds my gears, guys. Meghan and Harry, they're out here painting themselves as the victim of a grand conspiracy. The media, the palace, probably the mailman too. They're all out to get them. Give me a break. You lived in a palace. You had servants. Your wedding cost millions. And let's talk about Harry for a second. This guy's claims royal correspondents are just an extended PR arm of the royal family. Has he seen the British tabloids? If that's PR, I'd hate to see what bad press looks like. Uh, this engagement he talks about sounds more like a conspiracy theory. But my favourite part of this whole circus is how Harry says this media trauma and sees it as their narrative to control. You've got more media deals than Netflix has true crime documentaries. You're not avoiding the spotlight. You're basking it. Now, I'm not saying the royal family is perfect. Far from it. They've got more skeletons in the closet than a haunted house. But this constant victim narrative from Meghan and Harry is getting old. They're like that couple at a dinner party who won't stop talking about how they had their life is sipping champagne. And let's not forget, this is all coming from a Netflix show. You know, that little streaming service that paid them millions to tell their truth. If that's being silenced, then silence me all the way to the bank. But here's the tragedy in all of this. There was a time when Meghan and Harry could have been a good force. They could have made a platform for real change to shine a light on important issues. Instead, they've chosen to play the victim card over and over again. It's like watching a broken record, except the record is complaining about being broken. In the end, what do we have? A he said, she said situation where she in question seems to have a very flexible relationship with the truth. We've got a star BBC interviewer essentially calling Megan a liar. We've got the BBC itself saying her claims are untrue. And we've got Megan and Harry sitting in their California mansion. So what's the takeaway from all this raw ruckus? Well, for one thing, maybe think twice before you accuse one of the Britons most respected news organizations of orchestrating a fake interview. Two, if you're going to play the victim, at least try to keep your story straight. And three, if you really want to escape the spotlight, maybe don't sign multi-million dollar deals with streaming giants just a thought. As for Meghan and Harry, well, they've made their bed and a very expensive Californian bed. Now they have to lie in it. So guys, what do you think about the news? Let us know in the comments. We'll see you next time.